Let me start this video by asking you a question. What, in your opinion, is the biggest chokehold when it comes to management? Now, you may well be coming up with all sorts of different things. You know, the fact of too much work, not enough time in the day, total overwhelm, the team not doing what they're supposed to, the higher management, if they're applicable, are not doing what they're supposed to, colleagues doing or not doing what they're supposed to. But you may well be coming up with all sorts of different things. And you know, to a greater or lesser degree, they're all going to be valid. But there's one key chokehold when it comes to management, and that's of all levels, whether it be junior management or indeed you know, business owners, one chokehold when it comes to management, and that is fear. <laughs> okay? Now, you may well be thinking, Dave, what do you mean fear? You know? But the reality is, when it comes to management, the biggest thing that holds people back is that simple thing called fear. And when we're fearful, we make poor decisions. And when we make poor decisions, that impacts ourselves as individuals, it impacts the team, and it also impacts the business as well. But what do I mean by fear? You know, yeah, for most people, it may well be a fear of spiders, but the reality is, when it comes to that, it doesn't have much impact on the business. Not unless you run a spider farm or something. But what I mean by that is fear. It's the fear of actually being judged. It's the fear of getting things wrong. It's the fear of being told off. It's the fear of looking stupid. It's the fear of failure, etc. Now, all of those fears actually build up. And when they build up, it helps or it hinders, should I say, the management being authentic, congruent and actually doing the job to the best of their ability because they start to second guess. They start to second guess whether they're making the right decision. And when they start doing that, as I mentioned already, then they are making decisions from this state of fear, so that's an emotional state, because they don't want to be seen as being silly, of making mistakes. And that hinders the business. It hinders everyone. It hinders the team. It hinders the individuals themselves. And that then goes and takes it to a next level, which with many businesses, this is happening all the time, tragically. And when that pattern keeps on working, it creates a toxic environment. And again, yeah, may, maybe you've actually experienced this sort of scenario where departments are actually fighting against other departments and they're trying to come up with the impression that their department is more important than that department and they're trying to do the same against this department. Or indeed, you've actually got management that are actually saying, well, so-and-so, they're not really good at this, you want to speak to me? Or, or indeed, no, they're no good at this because of... And it just creates, a, again, the toxic environment. And like I say, maybe you've had experience of that, I don't know. I know I certainly have. When I was in frontline management working with certain organisations, and that created a culture of fear. And for many people, it was a case of, they didn't want to go into work that particular day and the following day and the following day because of so much infighting. Now, maybe, like I say, you've had experience of this being in this toxic culture, but I came across some information not so long ago and it's been featured in numerous publications, but the one that I'm going to refer to is the one that I came across and that's by the Smart Company. And it was actually saying that 80... 80% of businesses have got a toxic environment. I was flabbergasted with that, although I have had experience of that, like I say, personally, when I was frontline, 
but also when I've gone into organisations to help them. You know, you can feel the atmosphere as you're walking into the building and you start speaking to people. Now, the reality is, you know, when you've got a toxic environment, it's not conducive for the business and the people in the business to perform at its peak, to perform at maximum ability. If anything, it's, it's like trying to be a profitable business, serving clients when you're wearing concrete slippers. And the reality is, if you're wearing those concrete slippers, you're not going to get very far. But there was more to this report. <coughs> Excuse me. And it said that 40% of employees were passively disengaged. Now, I speak with organisations all the time and quite often one of the things that comes out, you know, what are your challenges? What are you looking for? Well, some of the questions that I ask are protect, uh, prospective clients. And said so we've got very little engagement. Now, th th there was reports and there was a term that came out, I think it was last year, may well have been a bit earlier uh, this year, as far as quiet quitting is concerned. Now, quiet quitting, wow, you know, that's disengagement. And as far as productivity for a business is concerned, it's a nightmare. But that potentially is being fueled by the fear as far as um, management is concerned. And look, there is, uh, I came across it over the last few days, uh, reports of teaching as an example. Now, the vast majority of teachers are trying to do the best they can with the skill set that they've got. Because most teachers have got passion for helping the children. And yet, they feel that they're not supported. And, you know, you've got so many kids these days that, you know, the, the latest thing is to actually say that they're furries and they want to be identified as a cat or whatever. Now, so many teachers don't necessarily agree with that, but they're afraid, so they're in, living in a state of fear, they're afraid to say anything because of any potential legal ramifications. Now again, when you think about it, a school is still a business. You know, it's serving its pupils, it's got a budget to attend to, and they can't actually, the, the teachers are in fear of doing what they want to do, what their passion is, and helping the kids because of potential ramifications. But it doesn't stop there either. You know, when it comes to this gender identification, and I'm not taking sides or anything along this line, these lines, I'm just sharing for the information that I've seen. You know, you've got so many people that are actually looking to change their uh, sexual identity and what they want to be known by, and you've got so many kids that think, no, there are just two particular genders but they feel that they can't give an opinion because other people are actually going to shout them down. So you've actually got divisions within the classroom as well, where you've actually got certain sets of children that want to be known as whatever, and you've got certain sets of children that don't believe in that, but feel that they're scared to air an opinion. And this is becoming a vortex, because what happens, the toxicity is generated which creates more fear. And the cycle just con continues working. But according to this report, it doesn't stop there. 33%. Yeah, so basically a third of the staff of those that were um, took part in this particular survey are actively disrupting so they're actively going against either what's been said what they've been asked to do what the beliefs and the values are of the organization 33 percent a third now how can a any particular business 
Yeah, whether it's a multi-million pound organisation, whether it's a charity or whatever, how can they perform properly when you've got a third of the team trying to sabotage it? The reality is it's going to be an absolute challenge if the status quo stays as it is. And again, we heard, especially just after COVID, of the mass exodus as far as staff are concerned. And this is resulting in 27% in of staff are looking elsewhere. So they're looking for other alternatives. Now, if it's your business or your management within that business, you've invested a lot of time, the business has invested the money in developing these particular people for them to want to leave. Now, don't get me wrong, there will always be people that want to leave an organisation. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side, relocation, changing personal circumstances, whatever. But 27%? Okay, again, nearly a third of the team that you've actually got are looking to move on. Now, obviously, that's not going to be the same with every organisation, thankfully. But if it's your organisation, if it's the company that you work for, let me ask you a question. If that scenario is happening in the company that either you own, you work for or whatever, and it continues like that, with the toxicity and the fear that's actually being fed by this toxicity, that is being fed by this fear, and the cycle is continuing. Where's the business going to be in five years? And when you think about where it's going to be in five years, what's it costing you? What's it costing you financially? And this is whether you own the business or indeed you work in the business. So what's it costing you financially? What's it costing you emotionally to work in this sort of environment? Now, there's only yourself that can answer those particular questions. Yeah, I can't answer that for you. Yeah, because I don't know. Yeah, because everyone's on their own particular journey. They've got their own experiences. But I'm sure with answering those particular questions, first of all, where's the business going to be in five years? What's it cost you emotionally, financially? I'm sure they're not great answers. So wouldn't it make sense to change that particular pattern and break the pattern of fear, toxicity, more fear, more toxicity? Because when you break that, part, that pattern, that's when management, that's when the team members actually start to behave and then deliver in a fantastic way that's actually working for themselves as individuals, expanding the team and encouraging the team. And then when you do that, then the business itself accelerates. You know, the service that you give to clients, as far as turnover is concerned, as far as profitability is concerned, all these things, once you break that particular pattern, start to accelerate. So how do you break that pattern? Well, the reality is that's something that I help with with the Management Mastery University because one of the first things that we actually work on is eliminating managers' fear or management fear so they can perform at their peak. And when they're performing at their peak, then the business just skyrockets and accelerates because people feel good about themselves and they're confident with the decisions that they're making. But when they're actually doing that as well, then they're not competing against each other because a encouraging environment has actually been generated. 
Morale is high because people are working together as a collective. They're actually working together in developing themselves, de developing the individuals and also developing the team. And because of that, the decisions that make are empowered decisions. And when we make empowered decisions because we're coming from a place of confidence, then that dictates the direction as far as the organisation goes in. And when everyone is working as a collective, then it's like a tsunami for this particular business accelerating moving forward, where it actually serves everyone to the maximum ability. So let me ask you a question. When that's working in your particular organisation, where's it going to be in five years then? What can you achieve in those five years? Who can you maximise in those five years? Who can you develop from the team that's already there to be in the next level for them and indeed becoming a major, major asset to your organisation? And what are the costs emotionally then? What are the costs financially then? And how much of, are you getting as a return on your investment? Both personally, and it doesn't have to be financial when I ask that question, but also as far as the team is concerned, the work ethic, the feedback from your clients, because all of a sudden, the turnaround in people's attitudes towards your customers been amazing and imagine this you know your clients actually coming back again and again and again and referring loads more organ uh, sorry lo loads more clients to you and your organization see and that's what we help do at the management mastery university we give the management the skills they need first of all to manage themselves because that's where management starts right at the very beginning we need to be able to manage ourselves first and then we can have a greater impact on the team on the business and on clients so if you'd like some more information about the management mastery university and how i can help you and your organization then either personal message me and let's have a uh, a brief chat, because let's face it, talking doesn't cost anything, does it? And when we have that, we'll find out where you are at the moment, where you want to be, what the challenges are. And if we can give you some pointers when we're having that conversation, then I'll certainly give those. Or indeed, if you'd like to have a bit more information, then go to www.managementmasteryuniversity.com. God, it's easy for you to say. So that's www.managementmasteryuniversity.com. And there's also a free download available there as well that explains a bit more about Management Mastery University and also highlights the biggest fear that's impacting management at the moment. So thank you very much indeed for watching this brief video and I look forward to catching up with you soon. So no matter where you are, whatever you're doing, have a fantastic day. Take care now. Bye.